Okay, before we pray for our new workers, and uh, let me just say a few words, and this is mainly for those that have served and will be serving, but it's really for, for all of us, uh, and it's about serving, being a servant. Uh, in our times, we do not care for that. If somebody says, well, you're just a servant, well, yeah, uh, but in the Old Testament, to be a servant of God was the highest title one could receive. The prophets were called servants of God. And to highlight that reality, please turn, if you have your Bible, to Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52 in verse 12 starts the great uh, oracle of God, of the servant that would come. Uh, Isaiah 52, and starting in verse 12. Most of us know of Isaiah 53, about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and I'll maybe read through some of that, but really the uh, oracle, the statement the, that was made about the servant starts in Isaiah 52 and verse 12. Behold, my servant will prosper. That is, he's going to succeed. Uh, what, what do we say about a servant if he succeeds? A servant, when he does what he's supposed to do, he prospers, he succeeds. And so God is saying, my servant will prosper. He will do what I send him to do. Isn't that a great servant? When you tell somebody to do it and they do it, Thank you. That felt great. You did it. <laughs> well, God says, my servant will accomplish what I told him to do. What was that? He will be highly lifted up and greatly exalted. That's probably being lifted up in the cross and then on to glory, highly, greatly exalted. But then he says, just as many were astonished at you, my people. So his appearance was marred more than any man. And his form more than the sons of men. He was tortured. This is what it took for the servant of God to accomplish what the father sent him to do. But he did it as a servant. Thus he will sprinkle many nations. That's the... Uh, Hebrewism that says, this is the way you're going to be justified. In the Old Testament, they would take blood in, a, in this plant called hyssop, and they dip it and would sprinkle it, and after that was done, justified. So he will sprinkle many nations. This is the way he's going to bring salvation to the whole world. Kings will shut their mouths on account of him. For what had not been told them, they will see. And what they had not heard, they will understand. Kings will say, wow, wow, look at what he has done. That's the servant of God. And when you serve the Lord, hear a living word or anywhere where you serve God, God, you will be honoring him. You will be honoring him. So those of you that have served in Sunday school, the nursery, you're honoring God. You're a servant of the Lord. And most of us know the rest of Isaiah, Isaiah 53, you know, the gospel. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? So much to say that there. For he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of parched ground. He has no majesty or form that we should look upon him, no appearance that we should be attracted to him. If you see a, a dry ground out there and this tiny little plant starts growing up in the dry ground, what value is that? 
stomp it on the ground, take it out, whatever. The servant of God grew up that way. Like no appearance, no majesty, just an ordinary other, another human being. But he was a servant of God. And sometimes we think that we need to be in the limelight and Oh, everybody to know us and acknowledge our work. And, oh, if they don't, oh, I'm... Uh, no. A servant of God is almost unheard of. We don't value them that much. But God sees. God sees. And God says, my servant will prosper. My servant will do what he's told to do. Those of you that have responded to the call to serve, know the Lord sees. He sees you. A servant is obedient and is doing somebody else's will. Uh, in America, we don't like that to be told what to do. I want to be the boss. Don't you tell me a servant says, yes, yes, sir. I, I'm doing somebody else's will. I, I want to do it this way. And you may have a great idea, but somebody else says, no, this it needs to be this way. Oh, okay. I will do it. A servant is obedient, doing somebody else's will. But then for us, we have to be careful because does that mean we just uh, do whatever, whatever everybody else wants all the time? And No. What are we doing, especially in Christian education? We are communicating biblical truth. We are communicating truth. It's not just do physical things. And in reality, that's what got Jesus in trouble, no? I mean, he fed people. He healed people all the time. He rose the dead. He, uh, oh my. So it wasn't that he, was, he wasn't doing any physical things. He was, but that didn't get him in trouble. What got him in trouble? Speaking the truth. And living the truth. So as servants, whether it's Sunday school or any other time, first and foremost to speak and live the truth. And when it's very clear from Scripture what he has said, then we want to be communicating that to our children, junior hires, senior hires, to adults. We want to, be, and that's how we're serving. Okay? There's many, many ways to serve, but in... Christian education, that's especially what we want to focus on. You see, communicating the truth. And sometimes communicating the truth will be sacrificial. Uh, people may not see. People may respond in the wrong way. We still need to be communicating the truth. Um, Turn to Matthew uh, 20, if you have your Bible, Matthew 20, to show another aspect of uh, servanthood. And again, this is an encouragement for those Sunday school teachers and for all of us to serve the Lord. Uh, Matthew 20, uh, Jesus has been addressing the question, hey, how can I be great? Now, we all want to be great. The disciples came to Jesus and, how do I, hey, who's the greatest in the kingdom? Well, we want to be great. That was way back in Matthew 18. And Jesus says, you want to be great? That's great. Let me tell you how to be great. And he goes on to two and a half chapters of how to be great. Only, <laughs> it's not the usual way that we think about being great. The way to be great is to serve is to serve in the kingdom of God. Um, in Matthew uh, 20, 
he's still telling them how to be great. And, um, you know, they, the disciples, they didn't get it like we don't get it so many of the times. And they start getting into arguments. Who's the greatest? And who's going to sit in Jesus' right and left? And they were getting into an argument after he had been teaching and teaching and teaching them. Um, <laughs> so turn to verse 25. Let's cut it short because we can be here a long time. Uh, Matthew 20, verse 25. And, and, but Jesus called them, they, you know, getting, well, verse 24. And hearing this, the ten became indignant with the two brothers because they were saying, who's going to be in right hand and left hand? Man, that's position of power. And the rest of the, the other ten got angry with them. They're all in it. Verse 25. But Jesus called them to himself and said, uh, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. And, you know, there's a legitimacy to having bosses and, you know, companies out there in the secular world, in the military, wherever. We need to have bosses that, you know, lord it over us, so to speak. Because if we are not told what to do and we're not, you know, confronted, we're going to do our own thing. We might be lazy. And so there's a legitimacy there. But look at what Jesus says. Now, he said, this is the way the world functions, right? Verse 26. It is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. And, uh, you know, when Jesus says something, that's the way it works, guys. <laughs> that's the way it works. You know, whether we want to fight it, we, whether we want to deny it, we have a better idea than you, Jesus. Really? Okay, try it. <laughs> it's not going to work. You want to be great? Then be a servant. Be a slave. And then Jesus not only says it, he does it himself. He does it himself. So he says in the next verse, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and gave his life a ransom for many. Gave his life as a ransom for many. We need to understand that, no? We, to, to give our lives over to others. Our time, our agenda, our happiness. No. And when we give up our happiness, uh, there's a, a death, so to speak. A death to my agendas. A death to my control in life. Because I'm looking out for the best of others. Not my manhood. Or my womanhood. Oh, I'm threatened. Well, get over it. Serve others. Oh, my manhood. Well, get over it. We're here to serve others. And some of you have served this past year at Living Word. Praise be to God for you. Praise be to God for you. And for those of us that are standing on the sideline, it's like, maybe I... No, I won't go there. <laughs> I'll just say it in general. Some of us need to give up some of the pleasures to serve God. To serve the kingdom of God. Uh, and like I said, the experience is that sometimes we're going to experience death. And, the, and, and, and in the midst of problems, in the midst of all kinds of pressures, to say, Lord, I want to serve you. I want to, whatever it takes, Lord. Then others get blessed while you hurt. And that's what happened to Jesus. That's what happened to Paul. That's what happened to the apostles, the prophets. 
Some of you look a little skeptical. <laughs> look at us. Uh, let's turn to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Peter chapter 4 and verse 8. This is the experience of the apostle. It's very unlike the Christianity that's being pushed on today in America. It's very different, guys. <laughs> look at the Paul's experience as a Christian. But then look at the effects. Look at the effects. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despairing. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are con constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death works in us, but life in you. You see that? Being a servant. Many times it's going to be experienced as, oh, oh, the drag and frustrating and hurtful and lonely even. It's a kind of experience of death. But as we give ourselves over to God to serve, then others receive life. That's what we're called to do. To be servants. But then the life of Jesus. The life of Jesus. Is manifested in us. We honor him. We honor him. Did we not just sing that? That's the way to honor him. Serving. Serving. Um, and. You know. We. We. We want to express appreciation, and, and we have. Now, isn't it great when somebody appreciates you? Ah, well, some of us have a few issues, and we have a problem with receiving compliments. <laughs> but it, it should, like, yes, somebody acknowledged me. And it feels great. But it's just an, another sinful person acknowledging you, and it feels good. Can you imagine when God Almighty acknowledges you? Wow. I mean, we can have the boss of the company call out your name and say, hey, so-and-so did this great thing. Woo! A general in the military call out your name. Somebody, whoa. But when God calls out your name and acknowledges your service, imagine that. Jesus says, that's the way it's going to be when I come back. Matthew 25, we'll close with this. Matthew 25. And this is where, you know, it's both a living by faith Serving the Lord by faith, not because it feels wonderful. There are moments, brothers and sisters, that it feels great. I'm telling you, there's great moments that feel great serving God. But at other times, it's pain. And we have to let go of our agendas, of our pleasures. I can assure you that. They're both there. But by faith, we say, I'm going to serve God. God. So, Jesus says in Matthew 25, and starting in verse 14, I won't go through the whole thing because it's just a great passage, but just want to highlight a couple of things. Uh, verse 14. 
Uh, for it is, that is the kingdom of God, it is just like a man who about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. Jesus said, I'm going to leave. Now I'm going to entrust my possession, which is a few things in the universe, actually the whole thing. I'm going to entrust a few things. I'm going to entrust it to my slaves. I'm going on a journey. Uh, and he's entrusted us the word of God. He's entrusted us people. He's entrusted us resources. Oh, my. What are you going to do with that? Are you going to serve God or are you going to serve yourself? Are you too afraid or are you going to serve God? And it's been a, a couple of thousand years since he said this. So it can get a little like, okay. But he says, look at verse 19. Now after a long time, <laughs> after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. He is coming back, brothers and sisters. He is coming back. And all the people of all the world the living and the dead are going to give an account to Jesus. All the owners of businesses, all the governors, all the presidents, all the kings will bow down and have to look Jesus in the eye. There is a day of reckoning. That's what Jesus is saying here. Now, for those of you that have been serving, and for those of you that will serve, look at verse 21. First came, and he says, look, I've done something with the possessions to serve you. And he did, verse 21. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with the few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. <laughs> Isn't that great? That Jesus himself will commend you for teaching Sunday school. Being in the nursery. Serving God. Now obviously those are the... Just a few ways we're celebrating here and want to appreciate our Sunday school teachers and workers and so forth. But for all of us, there's plenty of ways to serve in many, many different capacities, no? But this morning, I want to especially express thank you and appreciation for you Sunday school teachers, nursery workers, everyone that helps the children's church listen. You're serving the Lord. You're serving the Lord. When it gets lonely and frustrating and you'd rather be a Starbucks or I don't know where. But you say, you know what? I'm committed to teaching. I want to be faithful to that. Jesus is watching. Praise the Lord for you.